You get me. What's good, everybody? It's Lario back again with another video. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me here. Today, I wanted to go through a few tips on how to make your melodies sound a little bit better by bouncing them to audio. As you can see in this beat, I have everything in MIDI form. These are my three melodies on the top, actually four melodies, my bass and my drums. So I'm gonna play the beat real quick, let you guys vibe out for a second, and then I'm gonna show you how to bounce these to audio and why it's the best, in my opinion, to export MIDI to audio. Number one, one of the main reasons why people export the MIDI to audio is CPU purposes, CPU issues. Um, if you're running, uh, you know, if your computer is not that great, if you don't have a great processor or RAM, it might be in your best interest to export these to audio as you're doing it, as you're creating sometimes to limit that like skipping and glitching out on your on your session. So um, that's like one of the main reasons a lot of people export to audio. Um, another reason is sound purposes, uh, you know, it, you can create a lot more variation when you have these things in audio form. MIDI, you're kind of limited here, so when you export these to audio, you can even sample the things that you wrote as MIDI. It gives you more options, you know, you can create a lot different vibes, uh, a different bridge when you're trying to go for that bridge maybe in a song and you want a different vibe but you want to keep the same vibe if that makes sense, it's a good idea to maybe pull something from audio warp it, half time it, uh, pitch it up, pitch it down, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. So right here in the mixer we have our, our melodies right here. Right, this one is which and six. So six is right here. Alright, so f these four tracks right here are all of my melodies. So first thing what we're going to do is arm them to record. All four of these, arm them to record. Make sure nothing else is armed in the session that you don't want to record to audio. So once that, once that's done, you can hit Alt and R and then start. All right, now that we have those exported to audio, they'll pop up in your playlist here in the next available slot. So you can see right here that these four tracks, they got bounced into this section. So now what you can do is you can go ahead and mute all of these other MIDI patterns to make sure that they don't get doubled up. So we're going to turn this mute tool on right here and we're going to go ahead and we're just going to mute all of these. It's another good reason to keep your sessions organized because you see how easy that was to just in one shot pretty much just mute everything. Um, if it wasn't organized and things were all over the place that would take a lot longer. So just another reason to stay organized. And if you want, you can move these guys up here, just like I said, to stay more organized, right? Cool. Let's listen to that. It should sound exactly the same. There shouldn't be any difference in sound, mix, or anything like that. Perfect. All right, cool. If you want, you can route these to the mixer. I would suggest that definitely. So, route these to the mixer. The next thing you can do is, why not while we're in here, turn generic bleeding on all these clips as well. And this one. Cool. Another great reason to export these to audio is manipulation, like I was talking about a little while ago. So if you want, you know, say we have a section down here that we want to have like some sort of switch up, right? It's easy to do that when you have this in audio form. Let's cut these, right? There's only one melody playing in this section right here, so we just cut that, right? Let's move it up here just to see it a little, or down here actually, to see it just a little bit better, right? Right. Make sure that your cut is perfectly on grid, on both sides, on the beginning and the end. Sometimes it messes up. Make sure that's perfect. And then what we can do is make this unique. Save it. Save it. Okay, now we have this melody. Now what we do to this is not gonna affect anything else in the rest of the song. That's why I always make unique. Cool. Let's say we want these hats to drop out. We want the kicks to drop out maybe. 
halfway through, have them come back in over here. And maybe this is sort of like a drop, you know, dropped out, like weird trippy section. So let's turn the stretch mode on and let's stretch this double the length. cut it right here as you, you can you can hear that just instantly changes the vibe but it keeps the same overall vibe of the song but just dropping the drums out copying that to audio you know you can use plugins like halftime and all that stuff but i like to do it a little bit more manually i get a different sound out of it than just putting the halftime plugin on the mixer track when it's in midi form i love using audio i used to hate it back in the day but um once I got used to just exporting things to audio and manipulating them, I love it. And I, I, I won't ever go back to just, you know, sticking with one thing in, in MIDI form and trying to just manipulate it in the mixer track. Um, so yeah, let's, let's keep listening. We can warp this and mess around with it a little bit more too. So if you wanted to, you can double this up a little bit to get even more manipulation going on. Let's double that. Right. First off, let's, um, yeah, let's make it unique. So now we have this one and this one. We're gonna make this one unique so it doesn't affect the other one. Let's try speeding it up. Let's uh, undo that. Let's pitch it up. So to make it a little bit more full, we doubled it up. Same timing, same speed, right? But we're gonna pitch this one up an octave. This one is essentially down an octave and now this one goes up a higher octave than the original. So just to fill it up just a little bit more, you know? And then we can go to pre-computed effects, adjust the stereo delay a little bit, just to give it some more width in that mix. And then right here, when it goes back into the quote, normal part of the beat, right? We can add another chop here. Let's uh, turn generic bleeding on for both of these as well. Let's get these cuts perfect on the grid. All right, so all I did really was, you know, just chop these in fours. So it's gonna give it sort of a glitch kind of effect going into this section to give it a little bit of a transition. Let's hear it from here. Pretty cool. Maybe let's add one more glitch right here. So go bump, 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 pop, pop. Nice. It's very subtle, but it just, it's a vibe. So that's another reason why I like to manipulate and send things to audio from MIDI. Uh, another way, another reason why I do that is let's say, you know, there's like a stop in the beat. Say, you know, when a rapper is rapping at the end of a bar, you want the beat to drop out, right? If you have those in MIDI form still, whatever reverb and whatever delay tails are there are gonna continue through unless you add some sort of automation. And if the reverb and the delay are on the actual plugin, it's very hard to automate that. So if you bounce those to audio, then you can actually see and cut the reverb and delay tails. So let's say we wanna do it on this section right here. We want the beat to stop. Let's add a cut in that and then say we want the beat to stop right here right all you do is you slice those and you bring them back to the point you want to cut them to and then it's going to be complete silence versus you hearing reverb and delay tails running through them now you can hear the 808 if you want that 808 tail to stay there you can leave it but a way to get rid of that is very simple. If you don't know this, it's just a little extra gem in here, but I didn't, I wasn't meaning to go into the 808 stuff, but uh, right now it's on cut itself, but just cut itself in cases like that, it's gonna have it tail into the next thing. If you don't want it to tail at all, 
you can go to the volume envelope right here, turn the attack all the way to the left, hold all the way up, decay all the way down, sustain all the way down, and release all the way down. And now when you hit, you can hear, it doesn't tail out, it just stops. As soon as you let go of the key, it stops. So when you do that, just make sure when you go to your piano roll, that you, if you wanted these notes to tail out, you, you put those in there manually. So anything like that, we're gonna wanna tail out, and then that should be good. Now it's gonna be really complete silence right here. Perfect. Yeah, so that pretty much does it for this one. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below and make sure you share this with a friend if you get me.